The last part on our website is the contact form pop-up, which we will set to open upon clicking the contact button in the header. So let's go to the pop-up builder and make a start. Open the finder and type add new pop-up. Hold down command or control when clicking, so it opens in a new tab. Then give the pop-up a name and click create template. Here in the library, we have many pop-up templates to choose from, but we are going to create our own one from scratch. So let's close out of the library and make a start. First of all, let's take a look at the pop-up settings. In the layout dropdown, we can set things such as the width, height, and control the position of the pop-up. As you can see, there are many settings to play around with. For our pop-up, we will leave the default settings. Next, let's add an entrance animation. We'll set it to slide in from the right. And for the exit animation, slide back again. Let's also slow it down a little, like so. Now in style, set the overlay color to accent. And do the same for the close button. Then in advanced, add some padding. Okay, time to add our content. Click to add a section and drag in a heading widget. Then type the text and align it to the center. Next, we'll need the form widget. So search for it and drag it over here. Let's add some space between the heading and the form. So back in the heading widget, in advanced, unlink and add some padding on the bottom. Okay, time to set up our form. Let's first give the form a name. Next, we have a list of the form items. Each item can be expanded to reveal more options, such as setting the item type, which in this case is set to text as well as adding the label and placeholder texts. We can easily collapse, duplicate and delete the items. So let's delete these and go back to the first one to edit it. Change the type to checkbox, which allows visitors to select more than one option. Add the label and in options, add in the list of options. Next, click to add an item. The type is set to text by default, which is what we'll need for the name field. Add the label text, then add the placeholder text and switch required to yes. So it's a required field the user must fill out before submitting the form. Duplicate the item and change the type to email. Then change the label and placeholder text accordingly. Then duplicate the item one last time and change the type to text area. Then add a label and placeholder text as well. Set the rows to three. Since we have placeholder text in each field, we won't need to display the labels. So go ahead and set it to hide. We're doing this just for design purposes. It's still important to add the labels so that when visitors submit the form, you'll see their contact details properly. So we'll continue adding them. Okay, so now that we have all our fields, we will divide this contact form into steps. A multi-step form simplifies things and makes it easier for visitors to fill it out and submit. We will divide the form logically into three steps. Step one will include the project type checklist. Step two, the contact information. And step three, the message. Before we begin splitting it into steps, let's organize the items by adding a descriptive title for each step. Duplicate the name item and drag it to the top, like so. Change the type to HTML. Add a label and in HTML, type your text. Then duplicate it and drag it under project list and label it. In HTML, change the text. Then duplicate it one last time and drag it under email. Then add a label and in HTML, change the text. Okay, great. Now we are ready to add steps and divide up the form. So click add new item and change the type to step. The form automatically creates a step at the top, which will be step one. And the step we created is step two. Select the first step and type project type in the label. Then select the second step and type about you. Duplicate this step to create step three and label it your message. Then to position the steps, drag about you over here and your message here. Great. As you can see, when clicking through the steps, the content isn't aligned. Let's control the sections layout a bit to fix that. Click on it to enter its settings and change the content width to 500. 
then give it a min height of 60 VH. Also, set the column position to top so the content we added will automatically appear at the top of the section. Now let's take a look at some of the form settings. In buttons, you can change the size of the buttons and edit the text for the next, previous and submit buttons. Actions after submit allows you to choose what will happen after the visitor submits the form. By default, it's set to send an email notification. Since email is selected, you will see the email notification options below. You can change where the email is sent, the subject, message and more. Let's add another action after submit. Search for pop-up and in the drop-down that appears, set the action to close. That's all. So now, after visitors submit the form, the pop-up will close automatically with the exit animation we set earlier. In the step settings drop-down, we can change how the step titles appear. And in additional options, you can add a form ID and switch custom messages to yes, if you'd like to add any of your own custom messages. Let's change the success message. Okay, let's move on to style the form. Increase the rows gap a bit to add spacing between the form items. Next, change the label text color and HTML field color, as well as the field text and border colors. You can change the border width too, like so. Now let's change the button's background colors for the normal state and also for the hover state. For perfectly straight corners, change the border radius to zero. Then increase the text padding to 20 to add some space between the text and button edges. In messages, change the success message color to primary. And for the error message, use the accent color to make it stand out in case of a submission issue. Next, in the steps dropdown, you can change the steps typography, spacing, and padding, and set the inactive, active, and completed step colors. Let's also tweak the divider width and gap a bit, like so. Then, in advanced, add some padding around the form. Perfect, the form looks great. Now, let's make sure it's optimized for mobile as well. Set the padding to zero and click through the form to make sure everything looks as expected. As you can see, it doesn't take up all of the screen's height because the content in these steps take up less space. Let's fix that by setting the min height to 100 VH. And check it out again. Perfect, time to publish. There's no need to add any conditions since we'll be setting the pop-up to open from the header. So click save and close. The last step for the pop-up is to link it from the header. So back in the header template, select the contact button and in link, Click Dynamic Tags, Actions, Pop-up. Then click the wrench icon and set the action to open the pop-up. Type the name and select it. And lastly, click Update to save changes. Let's see it in action. Awesome! Now that we've finished building the website, it's time to check out the final result and see how to use our design system to apply changes globally throughout the site. So continue watching.